Welcome guys to another session on um, paths and graphs, DPV 4.5. Today we are counting the shortest paths in graphs. So to motivate the uh, solution, we're first going to talk about um, how the um, problem can manifest itself in in ways that are that could defeat the breadth first search algorithm. So in this case, keep your eye on node 5, and if we start at 1, and we start applying, um, I've called this distance, but you could think of it as hop. So the nodes that are one hop away from this node would be two and three. And if you do this one hop, you would get the weight of 100 here, distance of 100 here, and distance of 25 here, right? And then if you start enumerating further, you'd get a distance of 110 here and a distance of 125 here. And when you enumerate three, you would get a distance of 50, so you'll correct four. But when you enumerate four, you'd get distance of 75, and you can and you can fix node two instead of 100. You'd make it 75. But remember, five is not enumerated again, so the five gets the wrong distance here, and it stays 110 um, because two was already enumerated. So, so the breadth for such gave us the wrong answer in this case, right? But um, the problem we are really given is this, and so in this case, if you apply the same breadth for search algorithm. Then you get the correct answer because two is one distance away this is one distance away and if you try to approach two from this path it's a longer distance it gets a three instead of a one so whatever you discover first in a breadth for search is at a shorter distance from the source that's just the way breadth for search works and anything that you discover later would be at a longer distance from the the origin right so that's that's why breadth for search actually works now, before we move on to the solution, I wanted to also motivate or describe one more thing that actually um, breadth for search has been applied successfully, even in cases where you have uh, you know, unequal weights on these nodes. But let's assume they're integers. Let's say you could approximate all these weights to integers. Um, and if they are integers, then what you can do is that you can assume that instead of a weight of 100, there, there are 100 virtual nodes in between or 99 virtual nodes giving you 100 hops um, to reach to. And if you do that, then breadth for search can be successfully applied. Um, you have to assume that you know there's some constant k, some constant k, all these weights are less than that constant k. And therefore you can break this problem into that constant k. And it doesn't have to be unit edges. Remember that you know as long as you could find the like five or ten or some some common uh, denomination in which the the minimal size edge could be um, sized to some value. So that is a way to apply um, breadth for search to solve shortest path. And even if you have weights here, but in our problem that is not the case, and we are really to solve it this way. And so this is fairly straightforward. You can apply breadth first search knowing with confidence that breadth first search will give you the right answer uh, when the, the graph is unweighted and every edge is the same weight, it's unit uh, weight. So um, given that, we're gonna take this graph as our example and to apply our algorithm. And we're gonna start here at node one and then we're gonna traverse through this, this graph. But since the weights are relaxed, we're gonna think of them um, like this. So um, at the beginning, we're going to start at node one. We have two data structures for each node. One is called the D, which is the distance from the origin. And one is the C, which is the count of shortest paths. So these two data structures are maintained for every node in the graph. On top of that, we have two more data structures. There's a, five, there's a FIFO or a Q, uh, uh, which is first in, first out. And then there's a visited uh, list. And so we keep a queue and a list here. And then two data structures for each node, okay? And so when we start at the node one, its distance is zero and its, um, its count is kept as one. And every other node's distance is infinity and the count is zero, right? So that's the initial condition for the algorithm. Now. Um, the next thing we'll do is when we start from one, we're going to look at two and seven. 
And we're going to put two and seven, which are the explored um, neighbors of one, which is kind of the breadth for search algorithm. We're going to put two and seven in a, in a five four or a queue. And we, we have said we have visited one, two, and seven, right? So we'll remember that. Now, also you can see that since the distance was zero here, the distance of two becomes one um, from here, and the count becomes the count of whatever it was here, which is one. So we keep the count as one. When you explore seven likewise, you would put it as distance of one and count of one. Okay, very simple. So you're only exploring the neighbors of one, which is two and seven. So now we're done at this step. We have our FIFO queue and we have visited. And next we pick up two. And when we pick up two, we're gonna see its um, neighboring edges. So one, we have already seen seven. We have seen before um, and, um, and, and three we haven't seen. So uh, what we're gonna, and, and six we haven't seen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put three and six into our queue um, and then also visited and we're gonna enumerate them. So how do you enumerate them? You are at D of one and C of one here. So when you go one more hop, it's gonna become D of two and you're gonna take all the counts here and push them here. So it becomes in, from infinity, it became D of two and from count of zero, it became count of one because it took the counts of here. Likewise here, when you come here, this becomes D of two because you come from here, D of one plus one, D of two here, and count is taken from here, so C of one, okay? This was already enumerated. If you look at it, the distance was one and its distance was one. If you come from this path, distance becomes two, which is longer, so you're not gonna take that. You're gonna discard this distance. It's gonna stay at D one and C one, okay? So that's the next step. As we explore seven, we apply the same rules and now if you see that when you explore this path, um, two was already visited, it stays because this would be longer path, it would remain, this would remain. The only interesting case is six. So when you go to six, you see that distance is one, one plus one, two, it matches what is here. And C of one was there. So you, what you're gonna do is because this path also produces the same shortest path, you're gonna add the total count from here into this, right? So instead of, um, this was a count of one, and now this became, in the previous step, this was a count of one, right? So now in this step, once you come here, this becomes a C of two, because you take the count from here, path going from here, and when you enumerate through seven, is also matching the shortest distance here. So D remains two, and C becomes two, okay? So that's kind of, you get the hang of it, that you just keep enumerating in the breadth for you keep moving forward, re keep enumerating the next nodes and the next nodes, um, and every point you're going to basically apply the same rules and I'm just going to fast forward to the last node. So essentially once you reach five you can see that at five whatever you're enumerating is not giving you a better answer so it just stays it. So now at this point the algorithm finishes there's nothing in the FIFO and everything is visited we're done right no work to be done anymore and so when the algorithm terminates you have your counts right you have your counts and it's done in order n because you visited every node only once and you basically explored its edges and you might explore the edge every edge twice so it might be like you know v plus 2e so it's still the order of v plus e so it terminated in order v plus e and that's the algorithm so let's just quickly clean up the algorithm and, and look at how do we run this so you have to run bfs you have to keep two data structures, a vector of D and a vector of C. D is the distance from the origin and C is the count of shortest paths from the origin. Looking at a node that you're enumerating in BFS, um, what you have to see is that from the node V, if you have a bunch of edges and going into a node EI on the partner side, then um, what you have to see is if the distance of V, whatever was the original node, plus one is less than the distance of EI, which is the current D distance from the origin. If it's less, then this is the shorter path and it needs to be replaced in the EI, right? And also the count of EI will reflect the count of um, whatever the node V's count is, right? So you take that count. But if the distance equals then you add this. Now we saw this previously. You see this node, this node has two short paths, one coming this way and the other coming this way. And they're both equal. So it took the C1 from here and C1 from here, it became C2. When you add these two, it became C2, right? So 
that's the case here that if the distance equals you don't need to update the distance it's already minimum all you need to do is update the count to reflect the new count which is the sum of whatever it had plus the new node that is reaching there so that is the algorithm and this algorithm runs in linear time because it's really every uh, vertex and uh, every edge is visited perhaps twice and um, so that's how you can use BFS and slightly modified version of BFS to um, get at the, uh, the count of the shortest paths. So that's it for this episode, guys. Thanks for watching and hopefully you liked it. Um, if you had any comments, leave the comments for me. Uh, if you have um, liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Uh, and if you want to come back and look at the solutions to um, graph problems in this chapter, uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, you should come back and look at more solutions that I will be bringing soon. So thanks a lot for spending time here on this um, channel and um, uh, see you soon. Bye-bye.